is it for amazing grace how sweet the sound the saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now I'm found I was blind but now I see and so the enemy wants to keep us in the dark the enemy wants to blind the eyes of people and truth be told tonight he has many people blind who can't see the importance of salvation and, and many times even when you're talking to people and you're trying to witness the glorious gospel they look at you with that deer in the heart and the headlight look on their face it's because the enemy has blinded their eyes touch your neighbor and say I thank God I can see I can see <laughs> then the enemy wants to work in you now listen to me we talk about how God works in us and how he desires to work in us but make no mistake about it, the enemy wants to work in and through you as well. Listen to me. Have, 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 have you ever, and I got my phone, have, have you ever had somebody that the enemy influenced to get on your nerves? For those of you who don't think the enemy will work through you, and the enemy will even work through people right in the house of God. So the challenge for the believer is don't let the, don't let the devil work through you. Point at somebody and say, don't let the devil work through you. Somebody said, well, I don't really get work through me. The Bible says in, 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 Matthew, uh, in Matthew's gospel, I think it's around chapter uh, 16 or chapter 18. When Jesus asked Peter, when he asked the disciples, whom do men say that I the son of man am? And, and, and they said, some say you're Elijah, some say you're Jeremiah, one of the prophets. And then he asked them a personal question, who do you say that I am? Peter stood and said, I am the Christ, the son of the living God. Amen. Jesus said, blessed are thy son of our Jonah, for flesh and blood that revealed this to you. But seven verses down, he started talking crazy. And Jesus looked at him and said, get me behind me, Satan. Because the enemy Somebody said, Don't let the devil use you to get on my nerves. <laughs> read it, read it, read it. You feature two and two. Come on. In which you once walked according to the course of this world, Come on. according to the prince of the power of the air, yeah. the spirit who now works in the sons of his soul. What is going on when I'm not obeying God? The spirit of the enemy is working through me. Look at somebody and say, Don't let the devil work through me. And then the enemy will to take you captive. He, 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 he wants to come in and take over. Now make no mistake about this. The same way that God wants to control our lives, the enemy wants to come in and control as well. 2 Peter 2.26, come on, wait a second. And that they may come to their senses yeah. and escape the snare of the devil. What we need to pray for those who are not saved or for those who the enemy is influencing is that they may come to their senses because they're not acting godly. And so we need to pray that they'll come to their spiritual senses. Come on, keep reading. Having been taken captive to him to do his will. And taken captive to, by the enemy to do his will. Satan has a plan for your life. But then he has a a paradigm. Come on, read it. Ephesians 6 and 12. Come on. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood. Come on. But against principalities. Come on. Against powers. Against the rulers of the darkness of this age. Against spiritual hopes of wickedness in the heavenly places. The enemy has a structured and an organized army yeah. of fallen angels. And, 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 and we are wrestling not against flesh and blood. We, we, listen, we're not wrestling with one another. We're not wrestling with human beings. But our fight is in the heavenly realm against the enemies organized and structured. Listen, listen, listen. Here's the problem that I have. 
with the church. Many of us don't understand how important it is to have organization and structure in the house of God. Because the enemy's kingdom or uh, the enemy's army, make no mistake about it, is very organized and very structured. I mean, it is organized and structured. So the question that I have for the church is, why is there so much unorganization and chaos in the house of God? The kingdom of the enemy has one purpose, one mission, and one focus, and that is to take out the kingdom of God and anybody associated with it. The Bible says, here's his mission statement, the Bible says that the thing but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And he, and he carries out his evil plan with a very structured and a very organized arm. Are you listening to me? Look at somebody say, we got to get structured and we got to get organized. <laughs> so we have, we have Satan's plan, we have Satan's uh, paradigm. And now we're say the plot. Come on, read. Ephesians 16 and 11. I'm trying to get to, I'm trying to, get to my old passage and I'm going to be done. Come on, read. My people are destroyed. Ephesians 16 and 11. Come on, read. What is that? Put on the whole armor. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God. Come on. That you may be able to stand within the evil day. And having done all to stand. Stand therefore, have you burdened your ways with truth? Hey. Have you put on the breastplate of righteousness? Okay, okay, go, okay. Can you go, go, to, go to verse 11. Do you have verse 11 for me? Ephesians 6 and 11. Ephesians put 6. on the whole armor of God. Come on. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. He said now, he says now, put on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to stand against the methods and the methodologies of the devil. And see, the thing that God wants to remind the new hope of tonight is that the devil has a plan. He has these little schemes that are designed to trip you up. Look at somebody say, the devil has a method. Say that. And one of his methods that we understand from the beginning is deception. Somebody say deception. You remember in the garden, the thing that he did with Eve is he deceived Eve. And he came in and he had Eve to disobey God simply through deception. Not only is one of his methods deception, but the other one is temptation. Look at somebody say temptation. Amen. Matthew's Gospel chapter 4 verse 1. Come on read what he said. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit to the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterward he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, if you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. Come on, read what it says in Mark 14 and 38. Read. Watch with me and pray that the tempter overpower you. For though the Spirit is willing enough, the body is weak. Come on, what it says in 1 Thessalonians 3 and 5. Come on. For this reason, when I could no longer endure it, I get to know your faith. That by some means the tempter had tempted you, and our labor might be in vain. The Bible calls Satan the tempter. And the thing that he wants to do is he dangles bait in front of you to try to get you to sin. Are you listening to me? The Bible says in the book of James, the Bible says, let no man say that when he is tempted, that he is tempted of God. The Bible says that God cannot be tempted by evil, and neither does he tempt. 